Hi, YouTubers. Roland Martin here. I have the perfect boat for you. I really do. Now, I want, I want to preface that real quick. Okay, I'm a professional fisherman. I've been fishing, that's all I've ever done since the 60s. I was a school teacher and army officer back in the 60s. But ever since the 70s, I've been fishing tournaments. I've been doing film work. I've been doing all this YouTube stuff. And I got several boats. And I guarantee you, I have a boat that will fit your needs, both your budget and with where you're gonna fish. So let's just get started. Let's talk about my number one boat that I'm using a lot right now. It's my lowest entry boat. It's a boat that I've had for 28 years. This is my new tricked out canoe. With my little rudder system now on the front that I, that I haven't shown you that. I got a rudder system in the front. I got it set up with the trolling motor. Hey, it's got this own little cart. Look at this cart. I can take, I can take the, pull this thing along. I can just, I can pull it along just to wherever I want it. Look at this. That's just one way. Now, I also have a truck, and I can put this canoe in a truck, and that, that works fine. Okay, now what's this thing? Oh, look at this. This is my filming deal. Now, see, I'm out there all by myself a lot. So I put this little GoPro camera up, and I'll sit right here in the seat, and I can adjust that camera, and, and that's, that's, that's my camera. That's my cameraman. Now, along with this, I've actually put these new pontoons on here. These are actually floats that make this boat so, so stable that I can now actually climb back in it. Now, I'm an old guy, but I can climb back in the boat because it, the sides don't go down. Okay, in the back of the boat, I have a couple of neat things. I have a power pole system. This power pole system is, uh, look at this, so cool. I hit the button right here. If I want to anchor in shallow water, I come down with the power pole. Look at this, down it goes. Oop, oop, here, come up with it. Okay, that's the power pole. Again, I have a rudder system in the back. Look at this, I got to put the rudder down in case there's a lot of wind blowing. That rudder really helps me out. Now, speaking of a battery, I can run all day on this DECA Intimidator series, AGM series battery. That's an AGM battery. That's an advanced glass mat technology. This runs so well. It's just a wonderful, wonderful battery that just, just lasts. I can go 15 miles or more with that battery. Now, with this trolling motor, I can turn it on. And I've done a special thing with this trolling motor. You know, years ago, one of the neatest things I ever did was I developed for Minn Kota, I developed this propeller. And this is the weedless wedge propeller. And the original one, uh, that was the one I designed and I, I patented it and for 23 or 24 years. I had royalties on it. They still use this trolling motor propeller right now today. I don't get the royalties for it anymore, but I made a fortune actually uh, on the royalties on this motor. So I've now developed whatever motor I have. This is actually a Bass Tracker motor. I've, I've just converted my weedless wedge propeller to it. So that's what I have here. A weedless wedge propeller. You notice it says weedless edge right here. Yep. And so you notice right there it says weedless wedge. Anyway, now another thing you might not realize, anytime you put a trolling motor on a small boat like this canoe, you need have registration in the state of Florida. This is something I almost got in trouble over. The game warden told me, he said, Roland, you can't be running a, any kind of boat without you know, proper uh, registration. So I've got it all registered. This, this particular canoe is 28 years old. I got it through a contract with, with Minn Kota years and years ago. It cost less than $1,000 then. Tricking it out with a two or $300 trolling motor, with my three or $400 power pole, with all my other stuff, I still have less than $2,000 in this canoe system, and it really gets me everywhere I want to go. Now, Let's step up one, one more boat. Let's go one more boat ahead. Let's take my little <laughs> number one boat of the world. This is the John boat. This is a 15 foot car topper John boat. Okay, there's more John boats being sold today in the world than any other boat ever. This is the 15 foot model. I have a foot control trolling motor. I also have right here, I have a, a winch that I can winch it along up the banks in and out of my truck. It's a foot control troll motor. I also have a, a, a depth finder system on the front, a depth finder. Okay, 
Again, I can take that battery, the good uh, AGM battery from a Marine Master, and I can put it in this boat. And so I switch things around. I switch trolling motors around. I take life vests from that boat. I take that ice chest out of the canoe, and I'll put it all over on this, on this boat here. Now, another thing that I've done in the back, I've taken this rudder. I made a little rudder on this John boat to keep it, if I'm up front, running it, the back wants to swing around, I can put this rudder down in the water. That kind of helps a whole lot. Again, I'll have my equipment uh, uh, box in here. I'll have a live well. I have a live well in here as well. I have an ice chest and I'm all set to go. I have seats for this as well. I have pedestal seats that go right here that I can take off the uh, my next boat. And let me show you my next boat. Now, this is really, really a great boat. I can put this car topper boat in the back of my Ford pickup truck. It fits in there and I rope it in just right. And man, it works really fine. I've, I take it all over the place. Now, a lot of places in Florida have restrictions on motors, on the size of boats. Like you know, some places you can't use a motor. Some places you can uh, only use a trolling motor. Some places you can't use a trailer. There's a whole lot of places in Florida have funny, funny restrictions. That's why I have that cart running down the levee. I can take that canoe in and out of places that, that you normally would have to just drag it. Okay, let's show, let's show you my next boat. My next boat is kind of really cool. It's, I use it a lot for saltwater too. It's a little bit bigger John boat. It's a 1648 John boat. It's, it's really set up for fishing at least two or three people. You can, it, it's, it has pedestal seats. Again, it has a, a power pole system. I can take the power poles up and down. And, uh, and the neat thing about this boat is I have a nice gas motor on it. You know, all my motors now, in fact, they're doing away with two-cycle motors. You're not going to have any more two-cycle motors. They're going to all be four-stroke. This is a four-stroke, 25-horsepower motor. This little boat goes 25 miles an hour. I put a, a floor in the bottom of it, plus I put a nice equipment uh, shed. Again, I'm using that Intimidator series deck of battery, that, uh, that AGM series battery, that's just indispensable. You can run this boat all day long. Now, speaking of trolling motors, <laughs> look at this trolling motor. Okay, this trolling motor right here has a plate. I got a plate on this boat for this trolling motor. Now, rather than buy two trolling motors, I just take the trolling motor off my little John boat, and this little plate comes out, this pulls out, and this trolling motor goes over on this boat. It, it, it fits really well. So it's, it's really the right complement right here. Again, pedestal seats, good, comfortable ride. This boat, I'm telling you folks, is trailable. I take it all over the Everglades. It's just a super, super boat. It's a bigger John boat. It's a pretty good sized John boat. But again, I can get it in and out of small places that you don't have good launching facilities. That's the whole thing about that. I can take this boat off this trailer. I can put that John boat on the same trailer. I can put that canoe on the same trailer and everything. I have one small trailer for all three boats. So again, I'm, I'm switching around a lot of equipment from back and forth trailers and trolling motors and batteries, uh, life vests, just like I do with my tackle. I have one set of tackle that I use for everything. Okay, let's upgrade. Let's go to my number one small boat. My number one small boat of all times is this Heritage Tracker Series. Now you've seen me make many, many shows on this Heritage. It's the 40th anniversary boat. And boy, you're talking about a slick thing. Johnny Morris came out with this back in 19, well, 40 years ago, came out with this thing for $39.95. It was a similar boat, a 17-foot tracker, and he sold it through the catalog. Everybody said, well, you can't be successful selling boats through a catalog. It's not going to work. Well, Johnny took a boat very similar to this, $39.95 on a trailer. It had a 20-horsepower motor. It was a two-cycle motor at the time. And uh, it had a live well like this. It had almost the same thing, sold it for $39.95. Well, a couple years ago when he came out with his 40th anniversary motor, he now decided to sell it for $9,999. I helped him with it, so did Bill Dance and Jimmy Houston and I, we got behind it and we did all sorts of promotions for it. And as a reward and as part of our payment, he gave me a boat to use for television. This is my boat now and I use it a lot. 
I have it all set up with filming equipment. I have an extra depth finder I put on the front. This depth finder, by the way, is a really good uh, depth finder. It's an upgrade, but I use it for other things. Again, a, a really nice trolling motor. Uh, I have that power pole system that you saw on that little uh, aluminum boat there, I put on this boat. So I switch power poles around and I always have my power pole on this boat as well. So now it's also a four-stroke engine. Mercury has a four-stroke 40 horsepower motor. Now, looking at the back of the boat, it's really some special things. Number one, I've gone in with a with a special kind of thing. Number one, I have a cavitation plate right here for running shallow water. And I have a special stainless steel propeller that really, really helps. That really helps me in shallow water. And I have a Bob's jack plate. This is a jack plate that makes allows the engine to go up and down some six inches that really helps with the shallow water operation. So that's an upgrade. I've put, I've put a little bit more uh, money into the boat, and so instead of seven, having $9,999 in it, I got about $3,000 more. But, hey, it does everything that you need, and it fits the budget of so many young people. Now, you might ask, what do I need a boat for in the first place? Let me just tell you a story. When I was 14 years old, I was in the Boy Scouts, and I grew up in Laurel, Maryland, and our scoutmaster worked for a Grumman aircraft, and they had tanks, these fuel tanks for the jet planes, for the jet aircraft. And he'd get surplus fuel tanks, and he'd use them and he'd make canoes out of them for, for the Boy Scouts that we had. So I talked him out of two of them. And I took some pipes and put between them, and I was 14 years old at the time. I had my mother go up to the, to the, uh, this reservoir that was a water supply reservoir for Baltimore, Washington. It was called Rocky Gorge Reservoir. Rocky Gorge Reservoir, you had to be 16 years old to register a boat there. Well, I had my mother register the boat. And so she registered the boat, and I was 14 at the time. And when I wanted to go fishing, I left the boat up at the reservoir. It was a double canoe, canoe kind of thing. And when, uh, when I wanted to go fishing, I'd say, Mom, take me up to the lake. And I started fishing on my own, and that makes a difference. You go to the next level when you do that. I'm telling you, when, when you're just sitting in the back of somebody else's boat, and you're casting where they, they take you, and you're just, they're telling you where to cast, that's one level. A whole different level of fishing and and an expertise is when you run your own boat you make the decisions on where to go what points the best point reading your depth finders doing all those things and running your boat yourself you develop yourself into a far better fisherman so when you take charge of the boat and you run the boat and you go where you want to go hey that's becoming a fisherman, son. That's why you really need your own boat. And, I, and so when I, at 14 years old, had my own boat, from there it was a constant progression. I've had about 100 boats since. And I'm telling you, that first boat was the most precious boat I ever owned. And I had like $50 in it. <laughs> okay, let's go to my next little, little setup. Well, this isn't really a boat. <laughs> this is my little tracker, Off-Roads uh, 800 series. Uh, I, I do a lot of bank fishing. And I go, uh, this little crew cab thing, it's really, really a cool deal. It's an 800 crew cab. I have a, a winch on the front, and, I, and, I, and it has a, a, a nice top. It has four-wheel drive, and I have it all registered for the Everglades. I go down the Everglades, and I, I go down there to the big cypress, and I camp out, and I, I fish the canal banks, and I have it registered off-highway off vehicle use. For the state of Florida, I can go back on these on these levees, and I sometimes, in some areas where you can't even get a boat, I take my little 800 crew cab and just go bank fishing. And I and I've really had a lot of success bank fishing. You have to look at Florida and all the thousands and thousands of miles of canals and inaccessible waters. You can't always take a big boat in there. You either have to fish from the bank or have something like a canoe. And while you're talking about canoes, the big rage right now. Or kayaks. And the kayaks are fine. Kayaks can, can, can be just as good as a canoe, but see, I usually have a cameraman with me. I don't like just the fact that a kayak is just for one person. My canoe is for two people, so that's why I have a canoe. Now, let's go to, a, to another whole realm of boats. Let's go to a boat maybe you don't know about. Let's go to an airboat. 
Now, I've had this airboat about 15 years. I got it on a special contract that I was doing a deal for Diamondback, and I was showing them how, how this, uh, this whole thing will, uh, I could take it back in the Everglades, and I got this airboat camp way out in the Everglades. Let me just show you this thing. This is really something. This is really, really a boat. It's all ready to go. I keep it, I keep it charged. Look at what, listen, what, what, how easy it cranks up. I mean, it really cranks easy. Now, I tell you, I can take that airboat. I can run that airboat about anywhere you want to run. I mean, it is one heck of an airboat. This will actually run dry. I don't even need water. I can run it on this grass right here in the backyard, and I can run it right into the canal if I want. And that's what we have to do sometimes in the Everglades. Sometimes we have to go across land to get to the next little bunch of swamp. And we're, not only are we fishing, sometimes we're frogging, sometimes we're alligator hunting. We're doing a lot of things in an airboat. But airboats are something because here in Florida, there's a two and a half million acres of the big cypress swamp. It's an Everglades swamp. It's pretty much all airboat country. Two and a half million acres of airboat country. And I have, like I say, an airboat camp way down the center of it. Anyway, this is a 15 foot airboat. I've done several shows out of it. It's just a fantastic deal. I mean, the frog fishing is good down the Everglades. The worm fishing is good. I mean, I've done just a little bit of everything. Now, I also have a trolling motor here. Now, I, I switch trolling motors around. I can use this trolling motor, or I can use a, another trolling motor. I'm a tournament fisherman. You see me, I built my reputation winning a lot of tournaments, Angler of the Year titles. I've done all that stuff. And for that, you need a bass boat. Now, you can get by with that little tracker if you want to do some local tournaments. The tracker heritage will fish a tournament. But if you really want to fish big lakes like Lake Okeechobee, if you want to get up in the Great Lakes, if you want to do a lot of things like that, you go to a bass boat. This is the cream of the crop, son. This is my Nitro Z21. This is my brand new motor with the 250 horsepower four stroke. I got power poles, double power poles, special stainless steel prop, of course. I have the Bob's Jack plate on the back. It's just all really, really slick. This boat's tricked out. It is, it's got fantastic electronics. It has push button uh, controls. I can light everything up. The, the dashboard now is all, it has the charge system as is, is well, where uh, the power pole charge system runs this whole thing. And I also have my electronics. This big 12 inch screen up front is just fantastic. Uh, gosh, I can redirect power with the charge system from my trolling motor batteries to my main engine battery if that's the case. But anyway, it's just, this is, you can't believe. Now, there's some limiting factors when you're talking about a boat like this. Look at this front end. This is really cool. This is my, uh, this is my, look, I'm going to get in the thing. Look at this step system. I just come right up like this. Look, I put my foot right there. Put my foot right here. Look at this. Come right in the boat like here. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. That is the Minn Kota iPilot, the Ultrek series. This is the finest trolling motor. Well, there's other trolling motors coming out that are going to do as well. But for right now, I consider this a really good trolling motor. It has spot lock and it has iPilot. I can be coming along, say uh, an area the wind can be blowing. All of a sudden I get a strike. I hit the spot lock thing. It automatically locks into the satellite system, stops the boat. Now the rear end might swing around, but this front trolling motor will stay where you push the button and the back might swing around in the wind. But anyway, again, I have another big 12 inch depth finder. Really, really cool. Big swivel seats, plenty of storage. All my favorite rods. I'll tell you folks, this is the Cadillac of Cadillacs and bass boats. Now, the problem is, can you afford $70,000? Well, I, I, I'm on a special program I, myself. I'm, I'm with like Bill Dance and Jimmy Houston and a whole bunch of us. We have a, like a memo billing situation where for the advertising we do with the films we do, 
We borrowed this boat. This actually belongs to Johnny Morris in the Bass Pro Shop. And, and I have to be very careful of it. I have to carry insurance on it. And if I tear it up, it's my responsibility. But I use this boat and I haven't bought it. It's actually being lent and loaned on a loan to me for my film work and all. Okay. So guys like Edwin Evers and uh, Kevin Van Dam and Ott Defoe, all these really top-notch fishermen, we, we all have deals like that. We have deals uh, for boats just to use. Not that we own them, but we use them. Okay. That's really, really quite a deal. But, you know, here's the, here's the whole point of, of, of the essay today. And that is, you don't have to have a $70,000 boat. Only 2 or 3% of all the boats in the, in the world are, are $70,000 bass boats. And, then, and just a couple percent are airboats. Now when you get into those, those that tracker boat, and you get into those John boats, and you get into those canoes, and you get into the, all those smaller boats, now we're talking about 90% of the boating industry. So that's the boat, I'm sure, one of these boats will fit your needs. Whether you're from Connecticut to California, here in Florida, we have a lot of different diversity. I'm fishing everything from Lake Okeechobee in this big boat, the little swampy places down the Everglades with my airboat, down little canals with my canoe. So folks, you know, I try to cover it all. I try to show you a little bit of all types of fishing because that's what bass fishing is about. It's a very diverse sport, whether you're fishing you know, in, in, in California, for example, there's just tons of places to fish, but you need sometimes more than one boat. And that's the other thing. That's why I have more than one boat. But anyway, I think one of these boats will fit your needs. And I just wanted to point out some of the important features, what you need to look for in your next boat. Good luck, good shopping, hey, and good bass fishing. We'll see you again soon. Thank you.